string and how you praise God are in the same category. You know, most of you, when you think about praising God, and for some of you, I have to tell you, this is going to be a stretch for some of you. Because most of us have, what has happened in our lives and in our church and a lot of churches like ours, we have taken the praise of God to, to in a box where you do it for 15 minutes before a sermon, and that's the only time, and you think because you're standing, holding a hymnal, and singing that you're praising God. And it's not like that. When you find praising God in the Bible, it's always loud usually, not always, but usually loud. And, you know, praise God with a loud cymbal, praise God with the harps, praise God, and, and even said that they could dance before the Lord, praising the Lord. I think as a youth group and as an individual, just for the record, that I have a hard time praising God. So I want to help you understand from God's point of view what it means to praise Him. And I think you can equate it to silly string. When you push the lid and you depress that top of that can, out comes this stuff. And what happens is when it comes out, it goes everywhere, it's light, it's fluffy, it flies across the room. When somebody truly praises God, it will be like silly string. It will be flying everywhere. Now, in our churches, and I want to show you this, in our churches we have some kind of rule against praising God. And this is a legitimate sign by the way. In this city, you are fined a thousand dollars for possessing, spraying, or what is it? The use, selling, or distributing of silly string in public areas. Okay. Seriously, this is a serious sign. I'm serious. Because I can now, now, if you'll notice, it's only Halloween night. So what I'm missing is the mayor's daughter got sprayed with silly spring, silly string, and uh, she was upset. So the mayor made some rules. But here's what happens. Here's what happens in most of our lives. There is some kind of sign where you think you somehow are going to be fine or you're going to lose something like $1,000 for possessing a silly string if you truly praise God. You know, but I want you to understand that praising God is a lot like silly string. You say, well, David, where is that in the Bible? Sit so down. Psalms chapter 126, David was ex trying to explain to his mighty men what it meant to praise God. And this is how he related it. And everything past this point comes back to these verses. You know, I've got to tell you guys that praise to our God is contagious. And maybe one reason why we as a group don't praise God enough is because I don't. So I began to ask God, why should I, why should I praise you? Why should I be like the silly strength and just let it flow? You know, David said that he restored a fortune. Do you know something? I want you to understand something. A lot of you have lost a lot. You know, there's some of you in here that have lost in the last year, the two years, pain. You've lost. There's been great losses in your life. Whether it was a parent, a school, a friend, a boyfriend or girlfriend. Maybe it was just your dream of who you thought you were and you went into the ninth grade and realized Man, this is not all what I'm working for. Maybe it's you're a senior, and you're now, you feel like you're losing because this period of your life is ending, and you've lost. You know one of the first things and why we should be silly string about God is because God's in the restoration business. If God said, I want to give you life, and life more money, God restores what is broken. God restores that which is lost. David was saying, man, when... When he restored Zion, and for those of you that don't know what's happening here, the children of Israel were basically kicked out of their land by force. And God said, oh, these are my people, and this is their land. Get out. And they were marching back into the city, saying, this is our city. This is our land. And they were happy about it. God restored something very big in their lives. But what's in your life that needs to restore you know, I want you to understand that God is in the process of restoring you all the time. Because here's what happened. Most of us walk away from God and it costs us something. Maybe it doesn't cost you your salvation. It doesn't cost you eternity. But it costs you something right now. God wants to restore that. And that's one reason why we should be praising God. Because when you truly look at your life, you will find that God restores all the time. You had no chance of getting to heaven. You understand that? 
Most of you come to church from time to time and you're like, oh, yeah, heaven's a nice thing. That's a nice concept. You know, you, 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 know, you think it's like a geometry and algebra class. But you know, we're studying some concepts. This is no concept. This is reality. You have no chance of getting to heaven. God said, I'll restore that chance. And he sent a son to die. And when the son died, guess what? Your chance to be restored is the door's open. All you got to do is take it. Some of you still have not experienced that restoration. Some of you have been in church since you were old enough, since you were old enough to walk, and you've still never restored your eternity. So tonight, understand you can be restored. Whether it was a loss of something now, or whether it was your eternity. But understand something else about this. You know, when you look at the verse. And I want you to see the verse again. Let me see if I can go on. Do you notice that it says that our mouths were filled with laughter and our tongues with songs of joy? If God has to fill your mouth with laughter, then it implies that your mouth was not full of laughter to start with. Did you, did you catch that? There was an emptiness. Not only did God let them go back into Zion, but now He says, hmm, I'm going to do one thing better for you. I'm going to return something to you that you lost. You know, it's, it's funny. When Carrie and I watch you guys, there's times that some of you are around certain people who laugh out loud. And some of you throw your head back, and some of you have cackles, and some of you have a Kristen belly laugh. And those of you that have never experienced that laugh, you should get close to Kristen. She has a laugh that's contagious. You know, but there's nothing more exciting than watching some of you laugh. You know, you know have you ever been around people in your family and family? they're all laughing? What happens to you? You begin to laugh. God said, look, not only am I going to restore something, but I'm going to return the laughter in your life. You know, laughter is a great medicine. There's a lot of medical journals out there that, that, you, know, they, you know, that they even created the chemical when they pull your teeth call it laughing gaps. So that everybody understands this concept of laughing. You know something? If you are the sad person in here, and I think there are some of you in here that are naturally sad people, do you know what God wants to return to you? It's the laughter. He puts a song in your soul. He puts a laugh in your mouth. When's the last time that you've been happy enough just to laugh? You know, when you begin to praise God, He gives you Yes, He restores stuff that's broken, but He also returns the life. He returns what's missing. But I want you to see something else. And then if you look back at those verses again, your laughter and what was restored to you gets told to other people. You know, it's really interesting. If you really break down Psalms chapter 26, it becomes this roadmap. It becomes, it becomes in your car and you're driving those certain streets that you have to turn on. When God restores something, and then your, your laughter returns, the next thing is, everybody starts talking about it. It says that even the heathen nation, people that didn't think like we did, looked at them and said, look what great things God did for them. Your story gets retold. If I was to go to some of your schools today and said, tell me about her, what would they say? Well, she's just a you know, She thinks she's a black you know, She needs to get prepared. Cover that stuff up. You know what I mean? What would they say about you? You know, I mean, I mean, if, if if you had to stop right now and you had to write down exactly what somebody would say about you, what would they say? Do you know what they were saying about the children of Israel? Man, their God did something big for them. How did they know that? Because they saw them being restored and they saw their life. Do you know why I think some people don't want to come to church? You ready? Some of you are going to like this. Because the story they tell is a friend. And those people are a bunch of sour, good grief. They're always like, 